whole new person, this is Anton, and once again we're going to have to discuss the third interstellar comet discovered in the solar system, the comet 3i Atlas. The comet that was accidentally discovered just a few weeks ago, and the object that captured the attention of astronomers worldwide. But it didn't take long to already cause a bit of controversy, particularly around new claims that maybe this is not just some kind of a natural space rock. And yeah, you might have guessed who this is coming from. The now somewhat controversial Israeli scientist Avi Loeb. The Harvard scientist that became super popular after his original proposition in 2017 that the first interstellar comet Oumuamua was potentially an extraterrestrial probe. And so in this video I wanted to break down some of the facts we know about this object, talk about the evidence that we are pretty certain that this is a comet, and specifically address some of the Avi Loeb's claims. Mostly dissecting why based on the scientific data, none of the claims he makes seem to hold up. And so here we're going to focus on facts and not the hype. And so first let's establish exactly what this is. Discovered on July 1, 2025 by NASA funded Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System or ATLAS, at first this was a relatively faint and a relatively small object. But it was unusual because it was moving at blistering speed of 61 km per second. Something that was completely unexpected for any natural object. And follow-up observations within the next few days confirmed its hyperbolic trajectory, which was a key indicator that this was an interstellar object coming from outside of the solar system. It was moving way too fast to be gravitationally bound to our sun, and it was definitely going to leave the solar system never to come back. Which of course made this the third confirmed interstellar object after Oumuamua and Comet Borisov. You can learn more about both objects in some of the previous videos in the description. But the initial observations from July 1st to July 2nd contain a little bit of ambiguity about what exactly this might be, an asteroid or a comet. But within just a single day, within approximately 24 hours, multiple telescopes confirmed that this is definitely a comet. It contained a coma and a short tail. One of the first confirmations was by the Nordic Optical Telescope and was conducted by David Jewett and Jane Liu. And they definitively confirmed that this was an active object with a diffuse tail. And it was around this time that this became designated as Comet 2025N1. So even before we confirmed that this was an interstellar object, it was already confirmed to be a comet. And this is where Avi Loeb enters the picture. Pretty much right away, he turns his attention on 3i Atlas and on July 16, 2025, publishes a paper, a uh, side note, not a peer-reviewed paper, just a preprint, speculating that, okay, this is also possibly some kind of an extraterrestrial spacecraft, based on some of the anomalous characteristics. And so the question is, what exactly are these anomalies? Well, the first one is apparently its large size. The second one is the lack of identifiable chemicals. Also, the trajectory in his view was improbably aligned with the solar system, specifically the ecliptic plane, and seemed to involve close approaches to multiple planets, with the last one being the fuzziness of the object. Here the observed fuzz was not a coma, but was just smearing due to the fast motion of the object, and not because this was a comet. And as you can imagine, pretty much right away, everyone in the scientific community drew strong criticism against this somewhat bizarre paper. And so let's go through some of these points one by one and see what the actual evidence says. Let's start with the size. Abby Loeb and others initially used the brightness of this object to estimate the potentially large size of 3i Atlas. But as a lot of sources clearly explain, estimating the size of a comet's nucleus is very very difficult. And mostly because it's surrounded by a very bright cloud of gas that for comets we call a coma. And specifically this first point he makes seems to be completely invalidated with new observations from several additional sources. For example, here are the images from Hubble, almost definitively showing us that this is a comet. Likewise, the observations from Vera Rubin Observatory, that accidentally captured the comet even before it was officially discovered, actually even show us what this object was before it became too cometary, or before its tail became too large. And here the observations suggest a nucleus that's about 11.2 kilometers in diameter, or about 7 miles. And though obviously 7 miles is maybe a little bit large, and is definitely the largest interstellar comet we've seen, this is not the largest comet out there. As a matter of fact, you can learn about the largest comet we've ever seen in a somewhat recent video in the description. Now that one is definitely large. And by the way, it's also kind of headed toward us. But yeah, that one we know for sure is not aliens. 
And so being large does not mean that this is an alien spaceship. It just means that it's a large comet. I mean, honestly, I don't even know why I'm saying this. But the obvious giveaway was comparing the observations from Vera Rubin Observatory to some of the most recent observations that definitively show us that this object increased in brightness and now contains a tail. There is absolutely nothing artificial going on here. Ok, let's discuss the second point. Lack of identifiable chemicals. And this point was discredited almost right away. Observations from several telescopes, including Gemini South and NASA Infrared Telescope Facility, definitively showed us that the coma of this object is made out of at least water ice and potentially silicate grains. Something that we almost always find inside comets. And the initial non-detection of some gases, like for example cyanides or hydroxides, seems to be consistent with comets at very large distances away from the Sun. And that's because usually comets become more active as they get closer to the Sun. Ok, I'm gonna try not to be too cynical here. Basically, he made another assumption that seems to be incorrect. But here even the pre-discovery by NASA's test telescope suggests that this object was already active as far as 6.4 astronomical units away from the Sun, hinting on a lot of volatile ices and once again suggesting that this was indeed a comet. Nothing anomalous here. But obviously all of this will be confirmed with the observations from the James Webb that's going to be able to see pretty much all of the elements inside the coma. As of recording of this video, this has not been done yet. And so the chemical evidence points directly to a natural comet once again. Third, let's tackle that smearing argument. This is perhaps the most glaring factual error in his claims. And unfortunately seems to demonstrate some kind of a fundamental misunderstanding of basic observational astronomy. And honestly, I'm kind of feeling bad even saying this. Here, Avi Loeb argues that fuzz or elongated appearance around Atlas is simply an artifact of telescope's motion relative to the object, causing the object to smear. However, multiple sources, and pretty much all of the astronomers, point out that we usually use a technique called non-sidereal tracking, which means that the telescope is programmed to follow the moving object itself rather than background stars. And the evidence for this is pretty clear in a lot of the published images where the stars in the background are trailed while the comet itself is distinct and appears as a non-smeared fuzzy object. It also clearly shows an extended coma, like in this image from Hubble, directly refuting Loeb's claims that this is just smearing. So there's literally no anomaly here whatsoever and instead seems to represent some kind of a complete conceptual misunderstanding of how telescopes usually observe things. As planetary scientist Michelle Bannister noted, it has a coma. No large telescope has seen anything but a coma. Ok, we have another point to go through. The trajectory. And specifically the ecliptic alignment. Here Avi Loeb suggests that the close approach to Venus, Mars and Jupiter combined with the alignment to the ecliptic plane seems to be anomalous and could indicate a guided artificial trajectory. And while it's true that Atlas is going to pass relatively close to these planets, for example 0.2 astronomical units away from Mars and 0.4 AU from Jupiter, its trajectory is actually tilted 175 degrees with respect to the ecliptic. And so the more correct description here would be retrograde and inclined by 5 degrees. And so even though its path does bring it to the inner solar system, there is absolutely nothing anomalous about this trajectory and nothing to suggest that anything here is artificial. As a matter of fact, as I've stated in some of the previous videos, it poses absolutely no threat to planet Earth and at most will pass approximately 1.8 AU away from our planet. And I mean, if this was some kind of an artificial intelligence, would it not consider coming closer to our planet instead? And so no, it definitely does not have an anomalous trajectory and it definitely is not going to pass close to inner planets. At least not to our planet. But beyond disproving these anomalies, there are obviously a lot of other evidence suggesting that this is a purely natural object, there is nothing unusual about it, except for maybe of course where it's coming from. And so the only real anomaly about this object is the fact that it seems to be coming from the really ancient part of the Milky Way, with the suggested age for this comet potentially now being over 9 billion years old. And that's because it seems to be coming from the thick disk of the Milky Way galaxy. And that's because its high vertical velocity compared to the solar system can only be explained if it came from the thick disk population hundreds of light years above the thin disk where the solar system orbits. Now we have no idea exactly where it came from, but right now the initial evidence points at this being a super ancient object. 
and this of course provides a plausible explanation for this just being a natural object ejected from some kind of a star system a long time ago, very likely during the planetary formation in that ancient star system 9 to 13 billion years ago. And because of the water ice rich composition observed in its coma, we can also deduce that this object was very likely formed pretty far from the star, possibly beyond the snow line where water ice can condense into solid form. And just like so many other comets in the solar system, it was eventually ejected, possibly through some kind of a close encounter with a giant planet. Or maybe a passage of another star. Something that has been simulated by various models and something that's pretty well understood. So once again, pretty much nothing anomalous here at all. Which brings us to that main question. So why does Abbey Loeb continuously push these narratives, even in face of obvious contradictory evidence? Why Abbey? Why? Well, as many of his colleagues pointed out, since 2017, Avi Loeb essentially gained all of his reputation by making these extraordinary claims, or essentially making a lot of sensationalism, very often leveraging his Harvard affiliation simply to attract media attention and to then um, sell his books. Which is exactly what he did in 2017, what he then did a few years ago with his expedition in the Pacific Ocean, and what I think he's going to be doing now again. And so as this video by Professor Dave explains, explores in more detail, the video that you can find in the description, he seems to have completely shifted his approach to science. A lot of his early papers, specifically from the 1980s through early 2000s, focused heavily on traditional foundational astrophysics, with emphasis on birth of first stars, black holes, large structures in the universe, and gravitational microlensing. As a matter of fact, a lot of his first papers were quite interesting, which is how he eventually got his position at Harvard, and as a leading theoretical cosmologist. But then something happened in mid-2010s. He suddenly switched to speculative and unconventional science, with his focus becoming interstellar objects like Oumuamua, and search for extraterrestrial intelligence but usually through somewhat unusual and controversial means. And so since then, a lot of his studies have drawn a lot of criticism, mostly from scientific community, but also brought a lot of attention, primarily from media. But only because they were so speculative, and because here the priority was public engagement, or essentially going viral. And most of these recent papers have been criticized by peers, and even the larger scientific community, simply for one reason they completely lack any scientific rigor and are not based on any scientific approach. And in most cases, they literally read like blog posts. Which is actually why most of them never even get published in actual papers. They just end up being preprints. And so here, Abby Loeb went through some kind of a shift. From primarily being an astrophysicist and a Harvard chair of astronomy to a more controversial figure focusing on SETI, UFO research, and a lot of super bizarre claims including claims in fields he has nothing to do with, like for example, psychology. And he even talks about this paper in his own blog post. And though I guess maybe some people might agree with his approach, and his approach is somewhat successful at getting him all sorts of deals, all sorts of book sales, and getting him on some big podcasts, there are of course a lot of issues with this. Mostly because he's essentially saying that science is against him. But for someone who's not a scientist, or for someone who does not understand how this works, What's the big deal with Abby Loeb? Why is he criticized so much? Well, there are several reasons. Apart from the fact that he's using his position to attract media attention and to promote his books, pretty much all of his recent papers never go any kind of a rigorous peer review and do not even get published because they cannot possibly pass scientific scrutiny. And though normally for a typical scientist you would usually try to correct your paper and possibly change your methodology just to make it, I guess, more scientific, for Abby Loeb, his approach is um, plain victim. With every single paper, he posts a blog post, making himself appear as a victim of scientific attack. And as someone who's read hundreds of his papers, I would actually have to agree with the wider scientific community. A lot of his previous papers were really good. Most of his stuff in the last 10 years is basically just pulp fiction. On top of this, he often bypasses experts in the field and seems to always go to the most unusual conclusion very often involving aliens. And when faced with any kind of a scientific criticism about this, he loves referring to himself as a Galileo figure, basically being persecuted by a close-minded scientific establishment. Which seems to work because it does gain sympathy and further leads to promotion of his own work. But what's I guess even more interesting is that he himself, in a lot of his studies, does not necessarily take his own propositions seriously. 
as in he basically says that all of these speculations could be an interesting exercise, but he does not specifically state that this is super 100% aliens. And it's really this part that his critics dislike the most, because this approach undermines scientific integrity. A lot of his extraordinary claims that would require extraordinary evidence end up being completely disproven, which then lead to Avi Loeb once again claiming that he's just being persecuted. And especially when it comes to these interstellar objects, this is still a field in its infancy. We only have three objects. And so calling any of these objects anomalous is completely unfounded. We have no idea what these objects are supposed to be. And so assuming that any of these objects are extraterrestrial probes or alien spacecraft, is honestly just pure nonsense. This is definitely an incredible object and is definitely exciting for a lot of reasons, especially because it allows us to study pristine material from another star system, but here all of the scientific evidence points at this being a natural cometary object. Very rich in water, somewhat enriched in silicates, but not little green men. Although here I have to end on a small side note. What Avilob does right now is also unfortunately kind of detrimental to the larger field of SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which is a legitimate and important scientific endeavor that entirely relies on extremely rigorous, objective and scientific investigation of every single detection, which usually involves evaluating all of the data, involves consulting all of the experts and communicating all of the possible concerns, and most importantly, being able to discard a hypothesis that just does not make sense anymore, especially when evidence no longer supports it. And that's where Abby Loeb fails completely. Instead of doing that, he ends up publishing a book and making money, which is why he lost most of the respect from the wider scientific community, or at least in the field of astronomy and astrophysics. And honestly, here, I don't blame them at all because, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to make money somehow, but when a person becomes a grifter, um, that's taking things a little bit too far. And so, I think this is maybe going to be my last video on Avi Loeb and his bizarre endeavors, because I don't think he's going to be publishing anything scientifically interesting anytime soon. I'm sorry if you like him or if you enjoy his books or if you actually like hearing him on podcasts, but for me personally, focusing on actual science, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But we will be focusing on this particular comet in some of the future videos, especially once we have observations from the James Webb. And so on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon, where you can find additional videos and videos without any ads, or can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below, where, as always, you can also find all of the additional links, all of the videos, and some additional info on this situation with this new interstellar comet. And so until next time, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.